All right, guys, the purpose of this video is to, we're going to differentiate between a stroke versus uh, Bell's palsy. Uh, and then that's going to be versus a brainstem stroke. So at the end of this video, you should be able to know the difference between these three, hands down, no questions asked, to where I don't care how they ask it on this step exam, okay? So I'm going to use this question, but I'm also going to use these little drawings, okay? I know this is uh, real high-tech stuff here, but I think if we do the drawings for each one, it's going to make a, a lot more sense, all right? So the question reads, it says, A 64-year-old male presents to the emergency room for sudden-onset speech impairment as well as right-sided arm weakness. Patient's right side of his lower face appears to be weak and impaired. His right forehead appears to be to, appears to move normally. Patient appears awake and alert, but does not respond to questions in a meaningful manner and only stares at the examiner. Blood pressure is 130 over 85. With pulse 65, CT scan appears unremarkable. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Is it A, cranial nerve 7 impairment? Is it B, TIA? Is it C, hemorrhagic stroke? D, ischemic stroke? Or E, multiple sclerosis, and I think each one of these has a very uh, unique piece that you're going to see on the step exam. So let's kind of just go through these real quick, and, and I think at the end of this, it'll make a lot of sense. So let's just say we took this drawing, okay? And and this is kind of a stepwise approach, and just to kind of get that, and that background behind this is annoying, so let me just remove that for now. So if we look at this guy, all right, and just think of this, we're going to ask our questions, uh, you know, this guy is going to have, as far as symptoms, we're going to say he has slurred speech. Uh, and then this is, in this situation, it's going to be uh, sudden onset. Okay. Slurred speech, his eye movement is normal. Okay. When I say eye movement is normal, I mean, like, can he look up, down, left, right? You know, the extraocular movement's not an issue. Okay. But the key with this one is, so this guy has slurred speech, sudden onset, normal eye movement, but his lower face is impaired, okay? Lower face, and then we could even go, go as far as to say his, his right upper extremity is impaired too. But for the most part, let's just say his right lower face is impaired. So we have slurred speech, extraocular movements are intact, but he's got lower face, you know, kind of a dragging and stuff like that, you know, like a drooping, okay? With sudden onset, you better be thinking, and I know I know you're already knowing the answer, you better be thinking stroke in this situation. Okay? Stroke. Now, what they're going to ask you, what would be your first step? And, of course, you would say uh, CT scan. Now, CT scan, it looks for what? It looks for blood, right? That's really all this can be used for initially out of, out of the gate because it'll take at least 24 hours to see any other type of, you know, meaningful evidence of, a, of say, an ischemic stroke or something. So, it, look, it rules out blood because if it rules out a hemorrhagic stroke, then we're looking at it's going to be most likely an ischemic stroke. And so if we're in that window, what's the treatment? Okay, when I say the window, if we're within uh, 4.5, uh, I believe it's 4.5 hours, uh, or up to 4.5 hours, you can give TPA, okay? And you give TPA up to, up to 4.5 hours, preferably in the three-hour window. And the other key piece that they have to give you is this person isn't already anticoagulated, you know, with something, you know, Plavix or something like that. If they're, if they're not, then you give uh, TPA if they're within the window. So CT scan, TPA, 4.5 hours. Um, and then eventually you'll, you'll work your way to kind of some type of uh, monotherapy, most likely aspirin. Now, if they... But again, the key thing I want you to know right now is I'm saying slurred speech, normal extra extraocular movement, lower face impairment. Think stroke. And the question they got to give you some type of timeline, meaning the onset was you know say one hour ago. If it was greater than 4.5 hours, you don't do TPA, and then your best answer choice would be something like uh, aspirin. If they can't talk, and it's right side of the face, you know there's drooping on this side. If they can't talk, speech impairment. You know you better be thinking. Uh, left side of the brain, uh, and you could be, you know, you got Wernicke's area, you got Broca's, if there's an impairment in uh, Wernicke's, then you got to be thinking the in information coming in is confusing, but they can articulate themselves, right? Wernicke's the information comes in is confusing, but they can articulate themselves, so they're just kind of like uh, uh, fluent speech, but it's all kind of rambling, uh, neo I think they call it, neo uh, Anyways, kind of make, making up their own words. If it's a Broca's impairment stroke, 
then the information is coming in, but they can't say it. They can't articulate it. It's the motor issue of the speech aspect. So they're kind of more frustrated because they can, they know what they want to say, but they just can't do it. But again, going back here, stroke, slurred speech, normal eye, and normal extraocular movements. And then, uh, you know, I think just the lower half of the face because our next one, okay, so keep that in mind. So that's stroke number one. So here's our guy again. So now, let, now let's take it as in this guy has slurred speech. Okay, he's got uh, normal extraocular movements, but not, and he's got lower face impairment. So right now you're thinking, okay, stroke. But now let's add something to it. Let's say he's got, not only does he have lower face impairment, but he's got the upper right side of the face eyelid uh, impairment, kind of the drooping. All right, so we added that, and I'm going to add this other piece little here, this sensitivity to noises, okay? Loud sound, it's very sensitive to loud sounds. So again, we got slurred speech, normal extraocular movement. We got lower face drooping, but we also have the upper part portion of the head, forehead, um, on the right side drooping, and sensitivity to high to loud sounds. What's my diagnosis? We don't think stroke at this time. We think Bell's palsy, cranial nerve seven. Okay. And usually the question stem is going to say they couldn't, something like they couldn't uh, drink coffee in the morning, you know, because of this, th this issue, uh, slurred speech, loud, sensitive to loud sounds, because, you know, cranial nerve, uh, seven. And then, uh, the di again, diagnosis of Bell's palsy. And then what would be my treatment? Now, we talked about how do you, how do you work up a stroke in the last one, right? CT scan, uh, TPA within the 4.5 hour window, but in Bell's palsy, you better be jumping on um, oral, kind of low-dose uh, prednisone, okay? Prednisone. Now, what's the cause of this? It's a dysfunctional, dysfunctional cranial nerve 7. So you'll have this, they call it hyperacusis. And then, uh, basically, that's going to be a uh, weakness of the, what's that muscle in the ear? The stapedius muscle, okay? And that usually kind of dampens the, the dampens the sounds per se, but if the, this guy is weak, you're going to be more sensitive to sound, so that explains this guy. And you could also have, in theory, since it's the uh, taste, right? The cranial nerve 7 is the, you know, if you have impairment anterior two-thirds tongue, they could ask that. Uh, but it's more, and, and again, this is more of a clinical diagnosis. So again, if we started out and just said slurred speech, extra normal extra ocular movements, and just lower half of the face, you say stroke. If we have all that, and then we add the upper portion, okay, drooping of the forehead on the right side, uh, hypersensitivity to loud sounds, you better be thinking Bell's palsy, crayon nerve seven. You know, very close diagnosis, but different treatment, different everything. All right, so we got stroke, now we got Bell's palsy. Now, let's try this last one. Here's our guy again. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna start with, what are our symptoms? Slurred speech. Now, the difference, we always said extraocular movements were intact, but in this situation, this guy has impairment looking to the right, okay? impaired looking to the right. He's got slurred speech. He's got drooping of the face. He's got this impaired right upper portion of the face. You know, because so far, if I wouldn't have said the, the eye issues and I would have said slurred speech, drooping of the right and upper, you're thinking what? Bell's palsy. But I added this extra little piece here, right? I got this. This guy can't turn, look to the right. You know, he's, he's good every other direction, you know, up, down, and, and to the left, but for some reason, he can't go to the right. So something else is going on. And that's the key with the, the USMLE. You've got to be able to explain the answer choices. You know that answer choice A is going to be Bell's palsy, right? Because they want you to bite on that, but it's more than that. Slurred speech, drooping of the lower face, right upper face, but I can't turn to the right. How do I explain that? 
Now let's think about it. Well, the diagnosis is brain stem stroke. And so well, how do I explain that? Well, what that is, is this is explained by cranial nerve 7. Absolutely, right? Looks just like Bell's palsy. But we have an extra little piece here. What's the, you know, if I did all the extraocular movements on this side, you know, okay, go up, down, left, right. What muscle makes, allows this right eye to turn, to turn to the outside? That is the lateral rectus. And then what cranial nerve supplies the lateral rectus? Remember, how we do the extraocular movements, we go, um, so LR6, SO4, LR6, all over three. Right, because uh, that's just the cranial nerves. That's superior oblique four, lateral rectus number six. Everything else is number three. So the lateral rectus is cranial nerve six. So that is what's impairing this guy to move to the right. And if this guy is not going to move it, move to the right, then that's going to affect my other eye, the left eye, because you know, we're looking at the person from moving, uh, from looking, from looking to their right. All right. So cranial nerve seven issue. And then this eye movement is cranial nerve six issue. Therefore, it's a brain stem stroke because uh, cranial nerve seven, cranial nerve seven um, wraps around cranial nerve six before exiting brain stem. So they're right next to each other. All right. And then again, six. The sixth nerve controls the lateral eye movement um, via that, uh, gosh, I think it's parapontine uh, fasciculus, or in, in, well, medial, longitudinal, medial longitudinal fasciculus. But anyways, long story short, it's cranial nerve 7 and cranial nerve 6 involvement, and therefore it's a brain stem stroke. All right, so now very quickly, okay, very quickly, don't, don't leave me yet, okay? If I put three sheets of this guy in front of us, you ought to be able to uh, to nail this, right? So let's think about this. If I have slurred speech, but my eye movements are intact, and it's just the lower portion of the face, what do you think? Stroke, right? Stroke, CT, TPA, all that kind of good stuff. If I take the same guy and I say, I got slurred speech, Normal eye movements. I got drooping of the right side of the face, but now I got drooping of the right upper portion of the face. And I got sensitivity to the to the to the loud sounds. What's my diagnosis? Bell's palsy, cranial nerve seven. And it's a different type of treatment. Oral steroids. And then if I took the same guy and I said slurred speech, drooping of the face. Lower, upper, but now I can't move my eye. The guy, when I do the extraocular movements, he can't turn to the effects of his side. So not only is it cranial nerve seven, I got to say it's also cranial nerve six. Therefore, that's a brain stem stroke. Remember, like we said, uh, it was cranial nerve seven, uh, what do we say, seven wraps around six as it, as it exits. Yep. Um, so, the, so again, those are my three guys. So now let's go back to the question. And it says, 64-year-old 60, male presents to the emergency room for a sudden onset speech impairment, as well as right-sided uh, arm weakness. So I can just kind of draw this out right now, right? Um, he's got speech impairment. Okay, let's just draw it like it is. So I got speech. I got right-sided, uh, and well, he's got right arm weakness, okay? But... Uh, his right side of his lower face appears to be weak and impaired. Uh, his right forehead appears to be normal. Patient appears awake and alert, but does not respond to questions in a meaningful way and only stares at the examiner. Well, that means he's probably having some issues with um, you know, the speech centers, obviously, on the left side. Blood pressure is 130 over 5, pulse is 65, CT appears unremarkable, so there's no blood. Right, because CT would show blood. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? What is it? It's just this guy, right? So we are thinking stroke. Well, what type of stroke? Hemorrhagic or ischemic? Well, since CT was normal, it's, we rule out hemorrhagic. We're thinking ischemic stroke. 
okay? And if he's within that 4.5 hours, we give TPA. If he's not already uh, under some type of anti-clotting uh, drug at baseline, and uh, yeah, we go from there. Now, cranial nerve 7 impairment, obviously this is a name for Bell's palsy. And again, if I were to draw that real quickly for, for Bell's, if this is my guy, I would say speech. I would say normal extraocular movements, but I would say lower face, upper face, hypersensitivity to sounds. Bell's palsy, oral steroids. TIA. Just think of this. This is uh, painless loss of vision, lampshade stuff. Okay. And then the treatment on that, you know, do like a carotid Doppler or something like that to, to see where the TIA kind of comes from. Hemorrhagic stroke, you'd see that on a CT. Ischemic stroke, we just talked about. Uh, multiple uh, sclerosis, you better think this is more the painful um, loss of vision. You know, think optic neuritis, you know, opt and so you would do an MRI uh, typically for, for this one. And then, of course, the other guy, the last guy that we talked about, if we have speech, we have sp a speech issue, we have lower face, we got upper face, but then now we can't turn to the right. You know, it's like a Bell's palsy, but I can't look to the same side. I know it's cranial nerve 7. I know it's cranial nerve uh, 6. And I better be thinking brainstem stroke. All right, guys. So I'll probably make uh, some short videos too. Uh, maybe we'll just kind of have this and, you know, I'll just kind of describe it like that. And I want you to just, either to say it's a, it's a uh, you know, kind of a classic stroke, you know, ischemic or hemorrhagic. It's hard, hard to differentiate based on if I just draw a picture. Um, you better be saying Bell's palsy or brainstem stroke, guys. You got to have the differential on those guys. All right. Hope it was helpful. Mm -hmm.